Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at another Centurion Arms rifle, the Centurion Arms Recce rifle. Now, those of you who, who follow me, you know that we've done a couple videos on Centurion Arms. It's a company that I feel very strongly about. Their quality is second to none. It's all military-grade equipment that comes out of Centurion Arms, and there's a reason for that. Uh, you can't talk about Centurion Arms without talking about the owner, uh, Manu Leclerc. Uh, Manu Leclerc is a, is a recently retired Navy SEAL. Uh, he actually ran his company while a, being an active duty SEAL, him and his wife, Corey. Uh, and he specialized in first iron sights. Uh, then he went into rail systems, and now he's into complete rifles. Well, Manu was a SEAL. Uh, one of the main weapons that he carried was the Mark 12 Mod 1 SPR rifle. It was a rifle that he came to trust and love. Uh, and it came to be a staple that he would have for his entire career as a SEAL and all of his deployments. And after after leaving uh, the teams, he went to work at Crane. Uh, at Crane as a basically the Navy's voice uh, of small arms development. Uh, he spoke on what they wanted. He worked on many of the programs that SOCOM had. And he's been very, very influential. So the rifle that we're looking at today is going to be the Recce. The Recce is very interesting in the history of the military or SOCOM versions of the rifle because it predated the Mark 12, which we see over here. Uh, the concept that you see for the Recce rifle would evolve into the later SPR, but there's a big difference between the two rifles. The main difference between the Recce rifle and the Mark 12 or the SPR was the SPR was a rifle which had a technical requirement. It had this barrel, this gas block, this gas tube, this handguard. The Recce was not. It being predated, there basically was three main requirements. The premise behind the Recce rifle was for SEAL recon units. It was to have a rifle that would have a designated marksmanship rifle in a 5.56, which was the first time you would see this. You would have a rifle that was designed for precision to go out to 400 yards. Now, you basically would have a 16-inch barrel, 16, 18-inch barrel. Now, for as far as the barrel weight was concerned, it would depend on the rifle. Uh, in some cases, you would have a more of a lightweight match-type rifle utilizing a free-floating handguard, or you would utilize a... Um, much thicker, as you see on the on the Centurion Arms, a much thicker matched grade type barrel. You'd also utilize a two-stage trigger. Now, in the case of the rec the recce rifle we have from Centurion Arms, this is his own uh, that he has a two-stage trigger. But you could also see Geisley, you could see Knights, you know, whatever uh, they were they wanted to use, they were able to use. The rifle was very successful. That after the onset of the global war on terror, the requirement for the SPR was moved forward. It was it was uh, very very critical for it to get moving forward. And along with that rifle, you had the Mark 262 ammunition being developed as well. Early recce rifles would have match type ammunition, AMU type ammunition, uh, to to get those kind of uh, results. But eventually, you would go from the custom built recce rifle to the Mark 12. So we're going to talk a little bit about this rifle here, the. Centurion Arms Rifle, Recce Rifle. Now, we're going to go from muzzle to butt. Now, in the muzzle, I have my Saker 5.56 on here. So, obviously, we have the cannon and we have the uh, ASR mount on the end. Uh, as this rifle came, it came with a standard uh, A2-type mu uh, muzzle device. This could be gotten with a three-prong or the, or uh, Mani also has a, it's a rifle, it's a mount very similar to that that was used on the Stoner 63 systems. The barrel, the barrel is the complete key to the precision of this rifle. We have a 416 stainless steel barrel, six, six lines and grooves, right twist, one in seven, mid-length gas system. Now, one of the things that really specializes, uh, makes this barrel special, is the fact that the chamber is specifically designed for the Mark 262 cartridge. The way the chamber dimensions are, the lead, the way everything is set up, is designed to have optimal accuracy with the Mark 262 cartridge. And that is where this incredible accuracy comes out, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Another thing that was done to this barrel, which you could tell, because Mani, again, being a, a SEAL, he understands military weapons and some of the requirements that go along with military weapons. He uses a low-profile gas block that is drilled and pinned in place. Now, why do we drill and pin in place? That prevents the gas block from ever moving forward during heavy use. There's been many companies who have had rifles that have failed over the years because of that. In fact, I will mention uh, the CSAS. If you were to look at the CSAS program, you had Knight's Armament neck and neck with JP Enterprises. JP Enterprises uh, did not drill and pin. Well, during the final phase of the testing, the rifles were done in endurance to see how well they held up. Well, the JP Enterprises stopped working due to the fact that, that gas block started to move forward, eventually started getting gas loss, short stroking, eventually it shut. The gas off completely, and that's what knocked JP out of the out of the, out of the running, which declared Knights the winner. Was that was that failure? 
Monty does that with his Mark 12s, he does it with his Reckies and his lightweight rifles. So that is a very important requirement. So the barrel overall, you're looking at a two-pound barrel. This is a this is a, this is a as a as a heavy match grade barrel. And due to the fact this is a heavy barrel, you're utilizing an H2 buffer as well. The H2 buffer uh, would be utilized if this rifle was to go on fully automatic per se per se. Um, in order to have uh, to prevent bolt carrier bounce, you would have to have that extra mass on there. However, still on some automatic, you'd be able to see it as well. If you on a slow motion video, you'd be able to see the rebound. And with the H2, it, it prevents that. So you have that overall system on there. So the barrel on here, everything that he chose on it, the drilled and pin gas system, uh, the weight, the land, the lands and grooves, direction of twist, the chamber for the Mark 262, um, all that is what makes this rifle's uh, inherent accuracy incredible. Now, on the front here, you'll see I put a, a Harris bipod on here with a Swan uh, throw lever mount. Uh, very, very common with, uh, with the deployment of the Mark 12s as well as the Recchi rifles with the Harris bipods. But, of course, people could use whatever they wanted. There was no rule to what it was. Upper receiver, you're looking at a standard mil spec, 7075T6 aircraft grade aluminum, uh, type 3 coat hard anodized, forward assist, far cartridge case deflector, as well as the ejection port cover. Lower receiver. Standard mil spec 7075T6 aircraft grade aluminum. This is a, a Centurion Arm C4 lower receiver. It has a standard bolt catch, standard safety, uh, standard uh, magazine release. And of course, all those things can be modified uh, at whim. Now, the one thing that I did change on here was the pistol grip. Now, this came with an A2 standard uh, mil spec type pistol grip. I prefer the Myad. I put that on everything that I have. Uh, it just makes the gun that much more comfortable for my hands. Now, the trigger is something else that's a little bit different on here as well. Um, Monty offers a couple different kinds of triggers. He has a standard mil spec that has a, a it's been polished up quite a bit and has a, a nickel Teflon coating on it. And he also has a two stage. Two stage was a major uh, part of the re of the recce rifle. Now you more commonly would see Geisley. He would more commonly see Knights. Um, he has uh, Monty offers his own version, which is a lot less expensive and just as good. Receiver extension, standard six position receiver extension, uh, H2 buffer, BCM stock. Bolt carrier. Now the bolt carrier is something else that's rather uh, typical on here, but it's still mil spec. You have a standard mil spec bolt carrier group, Carpenter 158 steel. You do have the rubber O-ring around the, the extractor's spring. Uh, that is a thing that was done with SOCOM very early on, around 2002-2003, um, due to the fact that uh, SOCOM was using a heavy amount of M4A1 SOCOM uh, rifles, as well as the Mark 18s with the higher rates of fire. Extractor springs were known to wear, to wear very, relatively quickly. The rubber O-rings were added on there to uh, increase the, the extraction force by a factor of four. Uh, it made a major reliability enhancement uh, for the extractor on, on the rifles. Now, as we see, I, you know, I did add, add a few things on here. We, we discussed the bipod. We discussed, discussed the, the, the Maya grip. The scope that I chose on here was the Tango uh, 4, 4, 16 by 44 scope. Now, with the Recce rifles, you can see any number of different kinds of scopes. You would see a lot of loophole scopes on there. There was no specific scope that was issued with the rifle, so they chose whatever they want. I've been utilizing SIG optics for quite some time. I've been very, very happy with them. Uh, the clarity is excellent. Uh, the power of the magnification was ideal for this type of a rifle. Now, you go to the 16 power for a rifle that's designed to go around, uh, around 400 yards. Uh, 16 power is more than anything that you would need for that. You did have illuminated reticle on here. You have turrets on here for, for adjustment. Um, so this, I felt, was ideal. The scope mount you see on here is a Geisley. Geisley is probably one of the top precision uh, scope mounts that they, that's made in the industry. Now, um, I have a preference. You know, my preference has always uh, been spur. Unfortunately, those things are extremely expensive, but it's like a Swiss watch. I think they're the best ones that are out there. That's my preference. Geisley would definitely come in as a number two. Uh, some other scope mounts that you would see, like you see on the Mark 12 Mod 1 over here, you'll see the arms uh, throw lever uh, rings, uh, which is certainly a good option. Uh, the throw lever rings offer you the ability to, if your scope was to fail, a quick way to get that scope off of the rifle so you can use your backup sights and get back in the fight, where you have the Geisley or you have the spur, uh, where you're going to have to use uh, either a wrench or uh, a hex key to remove that so you can engage your iron sights. So there's a lot to be said about the you know, utilizing the throw lever rings, but you don't have as much of a degree of precision with the throw lever rings as you would the Geisley or the Spur, to say the least. Now, as we previously stated, this ammunition was designed specific, or this gun was designed specifically around the Mark 262 uh, ammunition. 
And when we did our test firing, that is the only ammunition that we use. I didn't bother with anything else. Um, if you look at uh, what Monty says on his webpage, he goes, design around Mark 262. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the range and we're going to fire off a few shots and we're going to see how it shoots. Well, we fired off a couple hundred rounds of the Mark 262 ammunition on a single malfunction. The best group of the day was achieved by Brandon from the gun room in Shenandoah. He achieved a .88 MOA group at 100 yards uh, with the rifle, which is incredible. Uh, your, you know, your average your average DMR type rifle can be within two inches. Uh, that's generally where you, where you you see below two inches. It suffice to get a center mass hit. So the precision accuracy of this one was excellent. Now, this is a brand new barrel as well. It's only had a few hundred rounds through it. I imagine once this barrel gets broken, we'll probably revisit that at some point too. We're going to see a much tighter group as, as time goes on. But the overall rifle, you're looking at an MSRP, you're looking at an MSRP of uh, 1625 for the rifle as is. Now, when you order these from, from Monty, from Monty you, can, you can make your choices of what different kinds of handguards you like and so forth or what other options that you have. So that's probably, pretty much your, your base price is going to be the 1625 we're going to look at some other parts and some other things that are put out by Centurion Arms as well. We have some codes here to help you save some money on some of the Centurion products, uh, whether they be the rifles, the components, or whatnot. It'll save you 3% off of complete rifles, 5% off of upper and lower receivers, as well as 10% off of everything else on the website. And those codes are in the description box. One of the staple products that, that uh, Centurion Arms has is their rails. You have two different types of rails. You have what's referred to as the, the C4 rail, and you have what's referred to as the CMR rail. The C4 rail, basically what that does is it attaches to the barrel nut of the rifle. Now what you see here is a C4 rail, and as you can see the cutout here where it goes around the barrel nut and locks into place. And you have two locking tabs on here that lock onto the receiver to keep everything centered so it doesn't move. Uh, this is probably Monty's most successful product that he has had, uh, and probably the one he's most well known for. These rails have been sold to OEMs, including Colt recently. You're seeing a lot of these uh, uses as OEM. And recently, you've seen him switch over to the M-Lock. So they've all switched over to M-Lock, so you still have some availability of key mod, but he's pretty much closing those out. We have different types. We have a standard carbine length, full length. We have what we call extended length, where it goes past the front sight base and offers you a couple QD, QD attachment points as well. We also have one that gives you as an extended rail, where you would see the front sight base would come in through here. And it would give you additional, uh, some additional real estate there to attach accessories on there. They're made in both carbine, mid-length, as well as full-length uh, you know, dimensions. The CMR rail is what we're seeing in the front here. Uh, this particular rifle is the lightweight rifle that Monty offers for, uh, for sale. Now, this is an extremely lightweight rifle using a cold hammer forge barrel. We do have a video on this rifle, uh, so you can get the details on that. But this is one of the models. I'd like to take a look at the sights on this rifle. This happens to be Monty's first product that he had come out with. Monty was quite fond of the HK diopter type sights, and he wanted to be able to adapt it to his M4, which is exactly what he did. So his first product that you see here is a diopter HK style type sight for the M4. So you always have to check the uh, availability of those sights because those sights are a little bit more rare because a lot of those parts are original H and K, and he has to find those sights to break down those parts to build onto his, his particular model. They're not inexpensive by no means, but those of you who like the diopter type sights, this enables you to have them on your M4. Another accessory that I'm very fond of uh, that he puts out is his rail covers. Now, these are not rubber. Uh, they are a harder type plastic that can be applied to either the M-Lock or the key mod just by a little adapter that he has. 
uh, has more of like a snakeskin type feel. Uh, your hand does not does not slip in it whatsoever. I put these on other rails too, not just the Centurion rails. You can put these on any M lock or, or whatnot. Um, this is another really great feature that uh, he offers for his rifles. Monty offers a couple different kinds of triggers. What we have here is his mil spec type trigger. Uh, and what we have is a nickel boron coated, and we have uh, very polished, so it gives you a very crisp, clear mil spec single stage trigger. Now, as we previously talked about with the Recce rifle, we also have a two stage trigger, and that two stage trigger is extremely uh, well made. It is extremely smooth, and it is exactly what you would want for a DMR type rifle. Another product that we want to refer to and talk a little bit about is the Mark 12 Mod 1 that Monty puts out. Now, again, we have a whole video on the Mark 12 Mod 0 and Mod 1 where we talk about the rifles, but I want to talk a little bit more about uh, Monty's involvement with it. Uh, probably to this day, right now, I think Monty at Century Arms is the only company that's offering a true Mark 12 Mod 1 upper receiver because he's still utilizing the original mil spec materials, the original Douglas barrel, the, the 1 and 7 inch twist, 18 inch uh, mid, uh, rifle length gas system and the specific chamber that was developed for it. Uh, he still utilizes that. He utilizes the proper Knight's Armament handguard. Knight's only makes these handguards probably once a year. And he basically they're four Mark 12 Mato builds and, and retro type stuff. And my able to see able to get those every year. Set up with the OpSync suppressor kit. So the utilization of the, uh, well, this is Allen Engineering. It used to be OpSync, but Allen Engineering sound suppressor, which is probably the best 5.56 sound suppressor I've ever used. Um, the way the system's set up, it, the way you way you, you remove it and put it back on, there's no change in impact. So most rifles, because of the way they fit on there with the collars, uh, you will see a shift. This one you will not. Um, basically, this ring that, it's, that comes up on the rear here, that's what centers it properly, so it's the same every time. Again, upper receiver, bolt carrier group, they're all the same for as far as uh, they're on the mill spec uh, type. And you have uh, gas buster charging handle on here as well. He offers this as an upper receiver. He also offers this as a uh, complete rifle utilizing his lower receivers. This particular lower receiver happens to be a Colt on here. Um, for as far as the stock's concerned, your average uh, or your normal Mark 12 Mod 0 and Mod 1 utilized a rifle length stock, and there was a reason for that. Due to the fact that they were selective fire, they were manufactured from M16A1 lower receivers, the rifle was a precision rifle, but if you got in a position where you had to have a full automatic rifle with a heavy barrel, you basically had a light support weapon with that heavy barrel, it would be able to get you out of trouble if you came under attack uh, under with multiple targets like that. So you could do that. Granted, it would destroy your barrel uh, having full automatic fire. But in order for the rifle to cycle properly, due to the rifle length gas system in the 18 inch barrel, you had to have the rifle length um, buffer assembly with that weight. Um, if you were to switch to a, to a shorter system like this or a carbine buffer, you would have difficulty with your weight and you would have a lot of issues with bolt carrier mounts and so on and so forth, which is why every Mark 12 Mod O and Mod 1 that left crane had the rifle wing stock on it. Once the rifles went to their units, you would see armors who would take them off and put these on. Of course, the operators would know that they would have uh, issues with their fully automatic fire with it, but they are more just in these things as DMR type rifles, so it wasn't much of a concern for them. So we're seeing a lot of different parts that are offered by Centurion Arms, and as I said, these are all military-grade parts. Um, what's really interesting is you have a operator who's been in the real world, who has used, utilized issue equipment, thought he could do better, and he manufactured and designed equipment that he carried himself. Uh, he did utilize his own rails on his rifles uh, while he served. Mark 12 Mod O's and Mod 1's. Uh, he's expressed some interest in the past of wanting to do a Mod O, but Mod O parts are very, very hard to come by. Uh, the Mod O's, uh, you, know, you have uh, parts that were developed and made by uh, Arms Inc. They're no longer in production. Uh, PRI does still manufacture the handguards, uh, but uh, the to, make, to build an original is almost impossible trying to find those parts today. Uh, he continues to offer additional components such as uh, rail systems. He's continuing to update them as well. Um, the rifle barrels. He offers several different kinds of barrels. Uh, he has standard combat barrels, and he only offers cold hammer forge barrels, uh, chrome-plated barrels. We talk a lot about uh, mill spec. Mill spec, and to this day, most manufacturers have to provide to foreign governments or governments chrome molly vanadium and cold hammer forged chrome-plated. For some reason, uh, there has not been any, any true testing to show the validity of the nitride-type barrels. Uh, so most militaries are not accepting it still. Monty is only offering cold hammer forged barrels. He's offering mid-length gas systems. Mid-length gas systems, you've heard me talk about it in the past. Mid-length gas systems is a massive improvement in reliability. 
uh, has no effect on accuracy, but its effect is on uh, durability and reliability for as far as giving you a little bit extra dwell time. He offers 16-inch barrels that are cold hammer forged with midland gas systems. He offers carbine length 16-inch. He offers 14.5-inch barrels. He's just recently released a 14.5-inch um, a SOCOM barrel. So he has a complete uh, line of military-grade barrels, which are combat-reliable and combat-grade. He also offers the barrels for the recce. Uh, you'll see those uh, those, two, those two and a half pound uh, barrels available, uh, both in the brush stainless steel as well as uh, is it black in color. He will also offer the uh, Mark 12 Mod 1 barrels, uh, which are relatively expensive because they are precision barrels. So you have a full line of barrels, and he does offer some other uh, scope mounts as well. I encourage you to take a look at his site. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at some of the incredible parts that are put up by Centurion Arms. As we previously stated, we do have some codes, so go check it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.